This is the pre-lab for the molar volume of hydrogen lab. Please take notes, draw pictures, and bring them to you to show me that you're ready to do this lab. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is get from me a piece of magnesium. Okay. I'll give you the right size so it's not too big or too small. And then make sure you record the mass into your data table. Um, and make sure that you use the analytical scale so that we can have as many sig figs as possible. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Um, I'm also going to give you a coil of copper metal. Okay, it's already going to be all coiled for you. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to roll the magnesium into a tight coil also and hook it into the copper wire. So it's going to look something like that. If you have trouble figuring out what to do when you get to that part, just call me over and I'll help you with it. And then you're going to have a rubber stopper that's going to have a, a hole in it. Okay, so it is a, a one hole rubber stopper. And what you do is you fit the end of the copper through the one hole, okay, so that the, the copper and the magnesium are sticking out the smaller end, okay, the, the narrow end. And then you're going to a udeometer, okay, uh, remember we use udeometers. The first thing you're going to do is put about 10 milliliters of 3 molar HCl into it, okay, so that's going to go in the bottom here, there's your, your HCl, alright, and then what you're going to do is you're going to carefully fill it up with water the rest of the way, okay, you're going to try not to let the water and the acid mix too much. Okay, and you're going to fill it up so that it's actually sort of got a little bubble. It, it's you're filling it to the brim, over really to overflowing. Okay, so you'll have it overflowing. Um, and again, try not to try not to mix. Uh, it's not really that big a deal, but try not to mix these. Okay, I don't know why I have this picture here. You don't need it. Uh, then you're going to take, so you're, you've got this thing completely filled with water, right? And on the bottom, some HCl. Now you're going to put your rubber stopper into the udeometer pretty firmly, but not too tightly. You don't want to break it or anything. And some of the water will actually spill out. You'll see a little bit of water kind of spill out over the edges. Not a lot, but just enough. So just stick the rubber stopper in so that the coil of copper and the magnesium are inside the water and this little sort of bit of the copper is hanging outside just so it doesn't fall. Okay, so far so good. Now you're going to put your finger over the hole, okay, in this rubber stopper and lower it into a beaker about two-thirds or halfway filled with water, okay. Now it's important to hold your finger over this hole. You turn the udeometer upside down, okay, so that the HCl is up here now, and that so that this is all water. Okay, so you hold your thumb over the the hole there. You turn the udeometer upside down. You put it into the beaker. Okay, and be careful not to remove your finger until you know the rubber stopper is under water. And then you just go ahead and clamp it in, probably using a burette clamp like we did for the titration. So then what you're going to see, if you look really carefully, even though they're both colorless liquids, the densities are different. You'll see the HCl slowly start to fall because it's a little heavier than water. And then what's going to happen is the HCl is going to fall down and hit the magnesium metal. Okay, so the magnesium is going to react with the HCl and I'm going to let you figure out the products of this very simple single replacement reaction. Okay, one of them is hydrogen gas. So what you're going to see now is you're going to see hydrogen bubbles start to bubble up. Okay, and eventually this is going to fill with gas. Okay, and it's going to fill and it's fill and fill. I don't know how much, but eventually you're going to have in here, you're going to have hydrogen gas. And what else will you have? Well, if you're collecting it over water, you also have water vapor, right? 
you'll know the reaction is done when the magnesium is gone. Okay, you'll also see sort of no more bubbles. Okay, and what you can do is just kind of tap the sides of this with a pencil or your finger and dislodge some of the bubbles. Okay, but then when the reaction's done, then you're ready to do the next step. And that is to remember there's an atmospheric pressure pushing down there and the pressure of the two gases here. But right now, they're not equal because the water level's way down here and the level of the gas is way up here. And remember from the past video, we have to make them equal. Well, the beaker isn't big enough to let us do that. So what you're going to find in the room is a ginormous graduated cylinder, okay? Really, really big graduated cylinder. Don't drop it and break it. It's expensive. And in it will be some water, okay? So lots and lots of water. So you're going to have to put your thumb back or finger back over the hole on the rubber stopper, take it out of the beaker, and put it into this big graduated cylinder, okay? So you've got to transfer it without losing any liquid, okay? So you got to be really careful. Put your thumb over the edge, on, over this hole, pull it out of the beaker, put it into the graduated cylinder, okay? And then the trick is to line up the level of the gas in the udiometer with the level of the water in the graduated cylinder. Because if you can do that, then the pressure outside equals the pressure inside so that the pressure of the atmosphere equals the pressure of the hydrogen gas plus the vapor pressure of water okay this comes from the barometer okay we'll go ahead and read that off a of barometer in the room this comes from a table Remember, we can find vapor pressures of water in a table. Just make sure you record the room temperature at some point. Okay, record room temperature. If you forget that, then we won't be able to use the table. Okay, and then you can just subtract, and we can find our pressure of hydrogen, and that's going to allow us to do the rest of the calculations. All right, so when you come to lab, make sure you have your pictures and your notes ready, and ask me any questions that you want to before you start.